Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words, so I thought I would, and a video is worth probably 10,000 words. So let me show you how we set up the inside of this trailer. Dean, can you bring that tape measure in here? This is a 44 foot tri-axle all aluminum trailer that the walls, it's kind of dark in here because it's not plugged in, there's no lights, but the walls are covered in the .040 aluminum in order to keep it from getting damaged. The motorcycle's going sideways and there's E-Track on the, on the bottom here. How far is that off the floor on this side here? Um, it's two inch. I think on the Cobra Coach, it's got a two inch trim piece, so that would work out. Uh, anything two, three inches off the floor, just like this, the black E-Track. And how tall do we go on the diamond triplet? I thought it was 19 inches on the wall. It's 19 here. Yeah. 19 inches on the wall. That's perfect for motorcycles. And we beveled the top edge, I think you can see. And this is the thicker, not quite the 3 eighths, I don't think, but it, it's much thicker than, than uh, the standard diamond tread plate to give some structural rigidity when the motorcycles, when you get a heavy Harley clamped in here. So we went the first row, two inches off the floor. If the trim piece is, is in the way, need to go three inches, that'll be fine. And the way we did the wheel wells, as you can see, uh, they had to be in the wheel wells too because we put the motorcycle sideways when we got a big load. We'll put one bike going this way and one bike going that way so the handlebars don't clash. And what we're gonna do in the middle is we put these Pingle wheel chocks here. These are actually removable. Dean, wanna demonstrate how, the, how this works? Those pop right out and we have these little screw in removable. Uh, so th this is removable. Uh, these are not, those stay in the floor. And, and the flush mounts. I could get the exact measurements for this and, and uh, design a template. So essentially to start, we need two rows of E-Track all the way down the wall and on the inside of the wheel well here. Chuck, the other thing I wanted to ask you is we bought these Pit Posse, um, they're uh, racks to, to put your tie downs in and Pingle, uh, the company makes the, 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 the tie downs. We polish these aluminum ones here. Uh, this is polished diamond tread plate here, of course and that's a, a 040 aluminum, but the Pingle chocks for putting the tie downs on, I was wondering, I can order more of these Pingle ones uh, because the Pit Posse ones are kind of cheesy and they're bending already. We just literally put them in last year and they're starting to get bent. These ones aren't, so I'll probably, what I'm asking you Chuck is, uh, would, would, it, would it make sense to have you make a rack for the tie downs that's maybe a little more heavy duty and maybe go a little bit longer, like three feet, because we put the tie downs. I like to keep everything really nice and neat in our trailers. Quite often I'll be picking up loads of bikes at night. So whether you install it there, uh, either way, if you could mark the wall, uh, somehow let us know either the, on, the, on the wall or on the floor where the studs are, like with a, a magic marker or something like that, permanent marker, I don't know. So when we need to mount stuff on the wall, like a, a jack uh, holder, uh, this is this is where we do the tie downs and I, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need in this trailer There's only one level and I've got three of these tie down racks. I'm probably gonna need four In the Cobra because we're gonna have the, the stacker lift up on top the um We want to put stuff like this broom Mount on the wall. So knowing where the studs are. I'll be very helpful This is a cabinet by Moduline. Uh, they're pretty nice. I don't think they're as nice as the C-Tech but they are pretty nice. We'll probably be mounting, obviously, uh, some, some more cabinets through C-Tech. And we, these are aluminum accessories. We polish these before we install them. Uh, this, this one here is just a cup holder for drinks. Then we got a fold-up fold table here. We have a fold-up table, really nice quality um, aluminum table. I'll probably be putting some things like that in the Cobra. We went with it with the medical grade stainless on the front here. That's not a mirror. That's medical grade stainless to give it a really nice look. That's an umbrella holder. Uh, we're actually putting a bed up in here and I have two windows for it. Uh, I'm not sure if you if you um, would be willing to do that if you are. Um, when I come to pick up the Cobra, maybe I'd drop this off to have you put the windows in here if that's a project you'd want to take on. I'm looking for somebody to do that. As you can see, we got it set up for three, six, nine, 12 motorcycles on the front to back and those pop out like Dean showed us a minute ago when we go uh, uh, to the wall we can put 18 to 20 motorcycles in here you can pack them in here much much tighter when you go against the wall that that's why we have the e-track against the wall the airline track might be a better solution 
I'm not sure exactly whether we should put the, the floor D-rings in when we get it back here. Dean's highly skilled. He could do it, but I'm not sure on the Cobra, you've got the Apatung flooring, and then I think there's uh, underneath that metal, but I'm not, I'm not sure how it would work, how we'd put the uh, D-rings in there because I think there's a metal bottom sandwiched with some insulation on the floor of the Cobra coach. So we have to put wheel chocks in. We have to put some floor tie downs like this or, or airline track. I'm not sure what the best solution would do. And as far as the second row goes, I don't think I can figure that out yet until we get the lift in because we might, we might want a row of E-track up high where the lift is going to be once the motorcycles are in there. I got to figure that part out. The, the, um, the E-track might actually be on the lift also, which would be even better. That's what I was talking about with, with the, uh, the lift. I wanted to put walls on it like this so we could put the motorcycles in sideways on top of the lift. I might be getting ahead of myself. I know you just wanted to know about the E-track, but we gave a ridiculous amount of thought to where we're gonna put everything here. Gotta have the E-track on the bottom, the diamond tread plate to protect the wall. We should probably line, I know the wheel wells are covered in carpeting right now, but that's gonna get trashed by the motorcycles. So we should probably line the wheel well, uh, at least this surface of the wheel well with the diamond tread plate. It could stay carpeted on top if that's possible. Uh, but I think diamond tread plate on the wheel well so we can put bikes sideways all the way up. So we're talking about diamond tread plate and what would be the best solution here. Um, if you went 24 inches, it would be basically to the bottom of this rack right here. If you went 16, then you could get three cuts out of a four by eight sheet. Is, is that correct, Dean? Yeah, they say if, that right. If, if this stuff comes in a 48 inch sheet, you'd be able to get three out of one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the the the. I don't really care as much about saving the money on the diamond tread plate. I want the best solution, um, as far as for function one, and then cosmetics too, because this trailer is going to make a state. The the Cobra is going to make a serious statement when we roll up to the nationals or the races with with a rig like that. Um, and I want people to go, wow, when they open the door. So uh, I, I don't know what's going to look better, 24 inches or 16. Obviously, the diamond tread plate, this is a thicker diamond tread plate. I don't know if you can see how thick it is here. Uh, maybe Dean can figure out that out. But we did bevel the edge. It has it uh, for cosmetic purposes. Going up two feet, one school of thought is you're protecting the wall a little higher up because the white would get damaged easily if motorcycle parts or anything is bouncing around in there or a bike inadvertently hits it. The other school of thought is maybe 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 it'll look cleaner with the diamond tread plate down low. As far as the second row, um, once we figure out the lift, then I'll know what to do with the second row. Sorry for rambling, Chuck. I'm just trying to give you as much information as we have. Just triple trekking the measurement, Chuck. It's 19 inches uh, right now. Um, that was what we thought was the perfect height for the wheels. Uh, I don't know if 24 would be, a, would, would. I also want, like I said, it's gotta look bitching, so. With the higher roof in that trailer, maybe two foot. I'm not sure which would look better or which would work better. I think functionally it's about the same. You do save a little material, cut it in, into 19 or 16, you'd get more use out of it. As far as making an aluminum tie down uh, shelf like this, I could send you one of these pit posses and maybe make something beefier that's not gonna bend like this and mount it on the wall and make it longer. These two are, it's 34 inches total. So you got two 17 inch racks, 34. I would think 36 inch would be minimum that I want one for the racks. Put it on a 40 inch. We're not sure what the stud configuration is, but these are 16 inch on center. So this worked out good for the 17 inches. Did I say that properly? Yeah, it, so what was your statement, Dean? Well, that, if the stud layout 16 on center, the studs are 48 inches on center part. If you make something 48, there's no room to, to get it screwed. So like a 50 inch piece would be better. Then you'd have so, easier to, to attach a four, you know. So how much longer would that be than this? I mean, uh, like another 12 inches, basically? This is 34. 34. So I just you, said 50. Yeah, so bring that out to 50 to see what we have. Yeah, a, 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 fi a 50 inch tie down rack would be pretty much mint. One of the things Dean pointed out is this 
is going out what three inches four inches uh, three uh, the, yeah the bars at three and a yeah. half the pingle one is only sticking out what in the inch and a half inch uh, and a half and yeah. the point he was making is this type of tie down would hit the wall if it was on that one so keeping the rack so it's out three th well we still got some extra space here you could go in a little bit i think these would knock eventually if you were that close yeah they'd be bouncing but you could maybe two and a half inches is a compromise off the wall yeah. but with this one you get a shelf on the top so i think that's a pretty cool setup having the uh, for can shelves up there you got a removable trash can mounted on the wall there we want e track all the way up on this one we were talking about not putting e track on the mezzanine because we think we're putting some toolboxes c tech boxes and of course the lateral will be right here so anyways thank you for your patience and uh helping us figure out the perfect solution thanks chuck this is one of our two shops we're working on some bikes in here if you're still with me on the video vintage kawasaki 250 we just restored and uh ryan's buffing the aluminum on the cr500 this is a this is a probably one of the finest cr500s on the planet aluminum tank aluminum block hole in suspension that's what we do we build the best vintage bikes in the world right here in rockville right old school you know it, here's an example of one right here what's this an 83 it's a beauty anyways thanks again chuck god bless america